let me show you how to do time blending with Photoshop. Time blending is nothing more than taking two images shot at different times but from the same position and blending them together. This is super easy, so if you want to follow along, you can find these two raw files I'm using for this video in the description down below. And now let's jump into it. So down there in that film strip, you can see our two images. This one is the main image, which I want to use for these sunset colors and some more details in the shadows, while I'm going to use this image for the highlights in the buildings. We are going to blend these two together, but first, we need to do the raw adjustments before we start with the blending. So let's go ahead, open up our base image and I'm going to collapse the film strip down below. So the image will be a little bigger here. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe color to Adobe landscape for a little more saturation. And you will notice this will already help getting out some more details from these very dark areas of the image. Then let's take a look at the lights panel. I do want to raise the exposure very, very gently to get out more details from the darkest spots. And I'm always going to pay close attention to the histogram. We don't want to overexpose, but we want to try and fix the underexposure a little. So I'm also going to bring up the shadows for that, getting out more details. And you can see as I pull up the shadows, how the histogram is changing. Now for the very underexposed parts, we can raise the blacks just like this and this fixes the unexposure but what this will do as well is increasing the blacks reduces the contrast and this in turn creates some kind of very soft look on an image and i think this looks really really good most of the times now we have worked on the darkest parts let's also work on the highlights i want to bring down the overall highlights quite a bit you can see this will have a very nice effect on the sky and by reducing the highlights like this we get some more muted tones in here which i think looks great for this scene but i also want to bring up the whites this will make those brighter areas a little brighter again we will just add some contrast back by doing this okay this is looking pretty good for the lights adjustments now what we can see is the white balance is a little too cold for this scene to change that we want to head into the color panel right here and work on the white balance so temperature and tint what i want to do for this scene is to bring up the warmth so let's raise the temperature and as we raise the temperature we reintroduce those sunset colors I'm going with a very intense look like this. I'm also going to slightly bring up the tint, but this is looking perfect, much better than before. I'm also going to raise the vibrance so the image will be a little more saturated. That looks pretty nice. We can also take a look at the effects panel here. I want to introduce some sharpness by increasing the texture. I'm also increasing the clarity slightly. And I was talking about a soft look earlier when adjusting the blacks slider. I want to further improve the soft look by bringing down the dehaze, adding some kind of glow to this image. That looks perfect. All right. Now, before I continue with the masking, I do have a feeling this image is not even. So I want to fix that by cropping it slightly. Let's rotate it a little bit. Now that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's take a look at before. You can see the colors do look much different and we do have a lot more details in the shadows. But now we can target a few areas specifically with a bit of masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And I guess let's start with the sky. We can create a very simple sky selection for this. What my plan is for the sky is I want the top part to be dark and cold while the bottom part just above the horizon is warm and bright. So with this mask, I want to target the top part first, making it darker. Obviously with this mask, we are targeting everything in the sky. So we need to change that by subtracting a linear gradient. And let's take away that part from the horizon just like this. So that's looking good. Let's make it darker by bringing down the exposure. 
like this. And as I said, I want to introduce some more coldness to the very top dark areas. So I'm also going to bring down the temperature. All right, this is looking really, really good. Let's further improve this using a second select sky mask. And again, I want to further modify it by subtracting a linear gradient. This time I want the area to be very, very small at the top. So I'm going to subtract quite a lot here. All right, and again, I'm bringing down the exposure. And once more, let's bring down the temperature a notch. Wonderful. Then I do want to work on the foreground because of course we have made the top part darker. That means we need to also change that in the reflection. Otherwise, you can see this looks very unnatural at this point. So let's create a simple linear gradient and we're covering the reflection in the water like this. Then simply bring down the exposure. I'm going to be dropping it quite a bit more than on the sky like that. And maybe let's pull this linear gradient down a little because I don't want to affect this bright spot in the water right here. Besides bringing down the exposure, of course, we also want to bring down the temperature in this particular spot. So let's drop it, introducing some coldness to that reflection like this. Perfect. Okay, I'm happy with the sky and the foreground for now. What I want to change as well is the city in the center. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm just like, dropping, dropping it down like this with a rather sharp edge right at the water. And we are going to say subtract and choose select sky. And just like that, we get a perfect selection for all these buildings we want to change. So what I want to do is to bring up the contrast quite a bit. Of course, this will also make these buildings darker, which might lead to some problems. So I want to counter that by bringing up the shadows, again, restoring some more details. And I'm also going to bring up the whites. Perfect. So this will just give the image more punch by making the contrast right here in the center stronger. By the way, this will also be useful later on when we blend these two images together. We kind of want the city to be a little bit darker since we're adding lights on top. So this kind of balances itself out later on in the post processing. So don't worry if it might seem dark at this point of the editing. Um, let's also once more work on the reflection. I'm going to use a linear gradient. And again, I'm using a rather hard edge right at the border between ref reflection and landscape. And I'm going to subtract a linear gradient coming up from the bottom. So pretty much only those shadows are affected. What I'm going to do here is to bring down the shadows, introducing more contrast and I'm also doing this because of the time blending later on. So we have more lights in the reflection as well. I just want to make it darker to have an easier time with the time blending. I'm also going to introduce a lot of texture because I want the reflection to look sharp and clear. I'm also going to add clarity to make the reflection pop a little, just like this. All right. Now we're almost done. I do think I need to adjust the sky a little more. So let's use another sky selection mask. Wonderful. And I'm going to say subtract and I'm choosing a linear gradient. This time I'm going to subtract the top part of the sky because I want to work on those warmer areas at the bottom. So this is looking like a good mask. What I want to do in here is, let's see, I want to bring up the blacks. Let's see if this makes it brighter a little bit, but not much. I'm also going to increase the whites. Here we need to be very, very careful to not add too much overexposure, but I think right around here looks good. We can improve the colors of this area by introducing some more temperature, making the bottom area of the horizon warmer. So let's see, I think I'm gonna go a little higher like this. Wonderful. We can also play around with the tint, introducing some more magenta tones to this spot. This looks great. We can push the colors even further using this color box right here and setting up a specific color. So I want to go somewhere in the 
orange red range and of course we need to play around with the saturation let's bring it up a notch so we can actually see it kicking in in this area perfect just to get an idea let me deactivate this particular mask to see the difference from before to after much more saturated and much more contrast between the city in the foreground and the sky in the back we can take it a step further using another sky selection and again, I'm modifying this mask by subtracting a linear gradient coming down from the top. This time, however, I only want to have a very tiny area around the horizon to be selected. Let's make that linear gradient a little softer. What I want to do with this is to add even more brightness to this spot. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. Always pay close attention to not overexpose anything. And I'm going to bring up the whites wonderful this looks great and at this point we are pretty much done with the masking adjustments i can deactivate all the masks real quick so we went from this with our basic adjustments applied to this much much better now let's do some quick color grading before we can start with the time blending so I'm going to start in the color mixer and let's start with the hue. What I don't like about this image are all those yellow color tones. That's just because I personally don't like them that much. I want them to be more orange and therefore we can use the yellow hue slider and bring it down, turning all yellow tones more into an orange color, just like this. I'm also going to bring down the orange hue just a little bit, but that's about it looks much better to me of course that's a personal thing if you don't like to do it you don't have to i'm also going to head into the saturation tab and let's bring up all those warm color tones a little bit red orange i actually want to bring down the yellow saturation for the same effect as before simply uh, because i don't like those yellow tones that much i'm also going to bring up blue and let's raise purple a little bit just for the sky and magenta as well. All right, looks great. Now we can do some more crazy things with the split toning in the color grading panel. And I'm starting with the highlights. Of course, we want to keep the highlights warm. So let's set up the hue right here in a very warm color range. And let's bring up the saturation. All right, this looks great. I'm also going to target the midtones. And again, let's use a form color range. So right here between red and yellow. And let's bring up the saturation once more. Wonderful. Now we can do some final color grading in the calibration tab as always. What I love to do is to bring down the blue primary hue. And for this image, I'm going to drop it quite a bit because I love what it does to the warmer color tones of the image. And I'm going to raise the saturation quite a bit as well. So now we have a really colorful image. The only thing that's left now is the sharpening in the details tab. So I'm going to drop the radius all the way down, increase the details all the way up, add some masking while holding down the Alt key because you only want the city to be sharpened like this. And let's increase the amount of sharpening. Done. So that is our image after the raw adjustments. This was our image at the beginning. You can see that's a huge difference with just a bunch of raw adjustments. But now for the time blending. You see in those buildings in the center are quite dark and by doing the time blending, we can create a much more interesting looking image. So let me bring back up that film strip down below. Now what we need to do first is we need to synchronize these images since we want to have pretty much the same settings on this image as well. So with our base image selected, hold on the shift key, click on the second image, right click on one of them, choose synchronize settings, check all and hit OK. Then let's take a look at our second image and here you can see a lot more highlights. We need to tweak them just a bit. I want to open up the lights panel and I want to bring down the highlights a little further. I also want to bring down the exposure just a little bit and let's bring down the whites. I'm doing this because right now some of these highlights are quite heavily overexposed. You could fix that by shooting an HDR and doing the time blending with that. However, I'm fine with doing it with this image 
having some overexposure in the brightest highlights. Now, what I want to do as well is to head down in the, in the calibration panel and I want to further bring down the blue primary hue. This will make the highlights appear to be more orange and that's exactly what I want for this scene. With those two adjustments out of the way, we want to select both images and now hit Open Objects. Photoshop will open these two images separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A to select everything in this image. Then let's hit Control C to copy everything. Go to our second image and here I'm hitting Control V to pass the image right on top. You can see those are perfectly aligned. So now for the time blending, what we want to do is to change the blending mode from normal to either lighten, screen or lighter color. That depends on your liking. I want to go with lighter color. And just like that, we have blended those two images together. Now there are a few more things I want to change. First, let me create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. I only want to change the lights layer with that. So I'm holding down Alt key and click between those two layers. This way I'm creating a clipping layer that will only affect the layer right beneath it. With that hue and saturation adjustment layer, I want to bring down the saturation, kind of making the lights just a little less saturated. And we can even play around with the hue, giving them an even warmer tone like this. This looks wonderful and much, much better and not that overwhelming. What we can do as well is to add some glow around all these highlights. Let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light, grab the brush by pressing B. I'm going to set the brush opacity to around 20%. And now let's zoom in a bit. And what I'm doing here is with the brush tool active, I'm holding down the Alt key and click right in those highlights. This will pick up the color tone. Of course, for pure white like this, it's a little hard to get the right color, but I'm going to target more of an orange tone up here and I'm going to further adjust it, making it brighter like this. Now with the color picked up, I'm going to just paint over the lights one or twice to add this glow effect. Now you can see a blue window up here. I'm again picking up this color tone and I'm going to add a blue shine around this window just like this. All right, and let me show you the difference from before to after. Again, looks much better with that glow effect. Of course, we can also apply some glow on the sky. So again, I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light first, and I'm zooming in on the sky. And again, I'm picking up a color from right here. I do want to make it slightly brighter so the glow becomes more visible. Now with the brush set up, I'm going to paint over here. You can see it's not doing much. That's because it's a little too dark. I'm going to brighten up this color a little more. And let's try again, just brushing over this area here, overlapping the buildings and everything in the foreground. All right, as you can see, that's a super subtle effect but we can make it stronger using a second layer. This time, let's go with the hard light blending mode. And I wanna bring down the brush opacity just a bit to around 10% because this is a very heavy effect. And again, let's pick up a color from here and just continue painting in a little subtle glow just above the horizon. Of course, we can also do the same on the reflection to keep it a little more natural, just like this. Wonderful, and that's it for the glow effect. Again, looking much better this way. Now let's merge everything, hitting Control Shift Alt E. I do think I want to use another adjustment layer. This time I'm using the photo filter, which will make everything just slightly warmer. I think this looks great for this image. And of course, you can also start cleaning up the image. So let's use the spot healing brush and let's go in there, getting rid of all these sensor spots and other things we don't need. All right, and there we have it. This is the finished image. So I hope this little time blending tutorial was interesting and helpful. Of course, as always, if you have questions left, 
feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.